Hello, my squishies. And welcome to this week's, let's say this week's, felt along. Uh, so I record these live. So I'm just going to wait until somebody in the comments says that they can hear me and that we are all good. We did have uh, audio trouble two weeks ago on our last stream, which I think I have fixed. Is that a hi? I'm going to take that as a hi. How is my audio mum? Mum is in the chat, my tech support. My mum and dad are in the chat, my tech support. Uh, while I'm waiting on them confirming they can hear me and people that are going to watch live come in, I'll give you a brief introduction to needle felting and these videos. Audio is fine. Excellent. We won. Um, so, unless you're watching live, because I, I leave these up afterwards so that when you can buy the kit you can felt along with me so here are a few handy hints if you're watching along after the fact you can fast forward me rewind me pause me anytime you like and as my wonderful tech support parents have discovered you can also mute me if you don't want to hear my ramblings because I ramble a lot in these streams and I do not apologize for a second <laughs> Then <laughs> there are a couple of nonsense makers that come and join us sometimes uh, in the comments and I love it and it's just absolute nonsense but hopefully you'll get a lovely finished picture at the end of it so that's how to work videos and now how to work felting so in your kit you'll have a foam mat this is what we're going to felt onto this protects your surfaces makes felting easier and is all around just brilliant one handy hint is every so often remember and pull the picture off the foam mat or else it gets kind of stuck into the foam mat but I'll show you that at the time. We've also got a bit of pre-felt here. So this is a fabric I've drawn on a very rough outline. <laughs> Pardon me. A very rough outline. And we're going to felt onto this. So this is Shetland wool. It's been gently felted but is ready to be felted more. You don't have to felt onto pre-felt specifically you can felt onto regular felt felted jumpers even some sort of cotton and fabrics like that can be felted onto as well and then next up is our needles so I'll hopefully whoop, focus bring these up so these are our felting needles they are very sharp they've got little barbs on one end which is what we use to stab the wool in now I use these just as they are, but I have included in the kit this, which is a needle holder. Some people absolutely adore the needle holder and use it. So I always include it. It makes it easier to grip the needle. So to work this, you've got a little peg in there. So you pull out the peg. There's a fat end and a skinny end. Put the needle in the groove with the hook over the skinny end and you pop the skinny end back in there. So I'll do that one more time. So you've got a peg in one end, you pull out that peg and you'll see there's a wee groove in there. Pop the needle in the groove with the hook over the thinner end and pop that back in and then you're ready to felt. I don't tend to use these because I use multiple needles at a time a lot of the time. Although you can get holders that have multiple needle holders I find I just enjoy the freedom of picking up one, two or three and going at it. Uh, oh, and with the needles, always make sure. Oh, no, most importantly. Oh, hey, Robin. Nonsense maker number one has already arrived. Um, with these needles, make sure when if you break one, which does happen, you find all the bits and dispose of it safely. I have a hard little plastic tub that I put them in. And then when that gets full, I'll just bin that. And to reduce breakage, always make sure you're felting straight. You're never bending the needle as you're stabbing it in. <laughs> yep. Troublemaker number one. Uh, yes, and last but not least. I know she's distracted me already and she's only just said hello. <laughs> last but not least, we've got our roving or tops the words are essentially interchangeable technically this is 
tops. Nope, lies. Technically this is roving, but it's interchangeable. And the way we work with this, this, this is, so it's mostly, da, 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 yep, it's all Shetland wool. It's come off the sheep, it's been washed, brushed and dyed. And then it's been loosely formed into basically long ropes and I've pulled off little bits for you. And the trick to working with this is you want to have your hands nice and far apart and gently pull and little sections will come out. Now these little sections, you can see that length is actually the length of the wool that was on the sheep. That's the staple length of the fibre. So if you have your hands too close together, you're pulling against, like you're pulling the same hair, so it's not going to nicely pull apart. Because we don't, I tend not to cut this ever. I like to use the full length. So have your hands nice and far apart and just gently pull out one section. And the other trick is if there's any twist in it, it's not going to pull apart either because twist is what makes yarn stay together essentially. This is precursor to yarn. So if there's any twist, that friction, surface friction is going to hold it together. So make sure it's untwisted, you've got your hands nice and far apart and grab out little tiny amounts. And in my, so everyone's felting is different. I like to use less and build up layers. So I'll continually talk about how little and how small amounts we're going to be adding in here. Okay. And then the last thing in your kit, you'll have a frame, but we will get to that a little bit later on. We might use it for references to check everything is still working. Right, are we ready? I th am I ready? I don't know if I'm ready. I've got my cup of tea there. I'll be slurping away at my cup of tea. There is a peanut. Peanut is the shop dog. Uh, oh yes, because I'm a little shop in the Scottish town of Fort William, the Highland town of Fort William. Uh, and I have Peanut the shop dog who is eating her dinner just now. So hopefully we'll keep quiet for a wee while. But if you do hear strange noises, it's just blame it on Peanut. She might come and make a feature at the end. Or she might squeak at us. Ready, set, go. Yes, right. Ah, so this week we are doing kind of a repeat. We're doing a Highland cow again. So we're doing Toffee the Highland cow. I don't know if you could have guessed by the beautiful, the beautiful picture that we've got here. But we're doing her so that she fits into the frame now. Because I'm transitioning all of my designs to just fit into the frames. Oh, yes. Robin is very kindly uh, reminding me to do the youtube -y things. So, oh, and Peanut is giving herself a shake. So if you like and subscribe to this video, I really appreciate it. Comment below. You can comment after the fact. Or if you hit live replay of the comments, you can see the comments that I'm answering as we go along. And Robin, give yourself a shout out. And she also has a felting channel. Give yourself a shout out in the comments, please. So everyone can go and see your wonderful creations. But that is definitely enough of my rambling now. Peanut has finished her dinner. Um, let's get felting. Don't. <laughs> oh, oh, Peanut has already started the grumblings. Peanut, leave it. Good girl, what's this? Uh, oh, you have a video. Oh, excellent. Right, I'll be watching that as soon as I'm finished this. Hold on, I'm going to mute myself for one second while I. Okay, we've returned. Hopefully she's got more treats. She should be fine. Uh, so I'm going to start. We've got two blues in this kit. We've got Dream and we've got Wave. So I'm going to start with the Wave. I'm going to work from the back forward. So I'm going to take some of the Wave and lay it just around her head. I'm ignoring the horns just now. We can pop the horns on after the fact. But around the head and just up the top here. 
and I'm just laying stuff up on the fabric and not felting it in yet because I like having that little bit of freedom to pop it down so I'm taking the dream now before I fix anything in place which is a joy of felting I'm also going to layer up a little bit of the dream over the wave and then so I've decided behind my Highland Cow we've got sky going down to grass or hills but it's in that way that like you see in a photograph when it's all close up on an animal and the background is quite fuzzy we're aiming for that so we've got two greens in here we should have the olive and evergreen this isn't olive I'm going to swap that give me one second this is olive <laughs> we have olive and evergreen so we're going to take a little bit of the olive and it's not going to be a harsh dividing line because of that fuzzy effect what was it? tell me what the well am I allowed to spoil what the video is that you did this week Robin or do I have to wait to see because when I'm working I'm back do I do I watch it tonight or do I wait till tomorrow morning normally I have Robin chatting along her videos playing when I'm working in the shop but it's been busy these two weeks in the shop oh my the tourists have returned I barely get a chance to sit down anymore which is wonderful I adore it don't get me wrong but I do sometimes miss the, those winter days when I can just sit and be creative in the back and there's no customers. Oh, you did a 3D Highland Care. Ooh, now we have competition because I am doing one of them. Not this Friday, but next. I'm, well, I might be doing one next Friday. Um, possibly. I might chicken out. I'm going to see yours, see yours is so fantastic and then not want to do one myself. Okay, so I've laid down the background essentially where I want it to be. It's still, it's not fully covered, there's still holes and that's totally fine. We just, imagine a painter is doing the sort of base coat and then we're going to build up the layers on top. What did you call your Highland Cat Robin? That is the question. I'm just taking a few of my needles and really gently stabbing it in. So I'm not going to put it, I'm not going to spend a lot of time felting right this second for two reasons. I like to build up layers and the more you build up layers and stab the layers in, the more it felts it down. But also in case I want to move anything, at this stage I can just pull it up because it's only very lightly felted in. Can you see those little strands there so it's still very movable you'll see it's they've started to pull through to the back there congratulations you have now felted this is all needle felting is is laying down colors and stabbing okay i think i need a bit more green there <laughs> lemon meringe oh that is an Excellent name. Meringue, yes. Meringue, not meringue. I'm like, what's a meringue? Lemon meringue. This one is called toffee. I, there's something about foods based names for Highland cows, isn't there? And I am go I'm making sure that I go outside the lines <gasps> I know in coloring you're always told to stay inside the lines but in this case especially we want to be outside the lines to make sure that when we put it in the frame there's extra on the outside Tina. poor soggy peanut is not feeling it today we've just been to the park for uh, a good half hour in the pouring down rain and she uh, did not <laughs> did not well she loved it in the park but she does not enjoy being wet okay so 
the background is roughly in place. We're going to build on it later. Don't worry about it. I want to get the colours in and then we start fiddling in the details. So we're going to do some Highland cow hair. I'm going to start. Where am I starting? Starting at her. So again, thinking of what is furthest back and working forward. Her body there is furthest back in my mind. So we're going to work on her body and then work forward. So I'm taking, and this is a fun bit. So I'm going to take some of all of the browns and I'm going to lay them on top of each other. All the browns and sandy colours. Just little amounts like that. And lay them on top. Look at that lovely colour. And some of the darker brown. Well, a tiny, let's see. See how tiny that is? Tiny, tiny bit of the darker brown. We've made a little sandwich, essentially, of all the colours. And I'm going to fold it in half. Right? Trust me, this will work. It just feels very odd. So this has built up layers of colour. And I'm going to lay that so we are going to have a solid line along her back. And all you're going to do is felt down these bits. And the more you felt this in, like as we're going along, the little bits of colour that we've put in that sandwich essentially will pop through. I'm going to make another sandwich and do a little bit more. <laughs> you're making a break for freedom so I'm starting with let's start with a, yeah starting with a chocolate one at the bottom and then building up just really thin layers my peanut might be causing a little bit of trouble just now but last night she was the best dog we we went to a talk at the bookshop which is just a couple of doors down from the shop and she <laughs> she's definitely making herself known yeah we were at the bookshop talk which is just a couple of doors down from the shop and she was such a good girl for the whole talk unlike now <laughs> she is she's having great fun she thinks this is spectacular she said i've been really good in the shop all day why are we not at home snuggling and i'm gonna put i'm going down just below her face as well there and don't worry, again, this is just a light base layer. We will be adding more colours and filling in any gaps that have been left. Oh, I think she's found something to choose. So I think she's happy. But we want to make sure that all the hairs are running sort of down the way so that it looks like the hair is... Look at that beautiful orange. Oh, now that's another point. Your Highland cow can be any colour you like. So Highland cows come in a range of colours, all the way from blonde, almost white, to completely black at the other end, with all the different browns, oranges in between. So, no matter, so if you want to do a different coloured Highland cow, by all means please do okay i'm gonna pop her nose in because her nose is very important and very cute um, although we will come back to the hair <laughs> so this color is not the white i don't know if you can see the difference on camera this is the white and this is a color that's just slightly creamer it's called tusk and we're going to use this for her nose so her nose is just going to be a blob, essentially, of this cream colour. Just a square. What? Well, not square, sorry. Let's get this right. A rectangle of the cream colour. 
there. So we are going to highlight it a little bit later on, but just now we've got that colour in there. And then we're going to go up to her face, which I'm just going to use the chocolate. So this one, the chocolatey coloured one, is called chocolate. She's found a bone to chew on, so uh, Peanut's very happy. If you can hear the bone, give me a shout. And I'm going to kind of scrumple this one up. And I'm going to put it over the nose. And just going up a little bit. Oh, and the question of the evening, as always. What is everybody eating? I'm going to assume mum and dad are having their regular homemade breaded fish and chips, which is delicious. So I've made a little... Sorry about that. <laughs> I've made a little weird L shape for her face. And then we're going to give her some epic fringe. Oh, and apple crumble for pudding. Nice. Yes. We're going to do the fringe the same way that we did the rest of the hair. So taking a little bit of all of the brownie and sandy colours and the oranges. Layering them up. This is just the base colour, so it will get brighter and we'll put different highlights on it. And the fun way to do her hair is again, we folded it in half. <laughs> okay, I'm going to move this thing off the floor. Hold on one second. Okay, the toy, not a toy, the box of boxes that she keeps trying to break into is now off the floor. So to get her lovely sweeping fringe, <laughs> okay, 1pm might be a little bit too early for dinner. Let's fold it in half, pop it up along, I don't know if you can see there, but like the top of her head and then sweep it. I like having, I like to give her a really nice long windswept fringe. And again, we're going to build on that, but that's just a basis. You can see how I need to move my, uh, put a little bit more blue there. I'll do that just now. Okay, what else are we missing? We're missing her ears. Very important. And, oh, I know why she's looking. <laughs> she's looking like I missed the bit. We need to move this along a little bit. So I've missed half of the, half of the picture. There we go. That's better. Oh, hey. Oh, hey. I'm just going to add in a little bit of green up there. Oh, no, I'm not, because that's where her ears are going. So let's pop her ears in. I'm going to use the chocolate brown for the ears again. And they're just essentially squares again on the edge. 
So about there. And then another one on the other side. Now we're still, so don't worry if she looks a little bit funny. We're still at the very early stage of <laughs> moving it around, but let's see. Where do I want? Yeah, there we go. Yes. Okay. Last bit to put in. And one of the most important bits is her horns. So we don't want her horns to be too long. We want them to fit in the picture. So again, we're going to take <laughs> some of the not quite white, but tusk, fold it in half, but we may need to shorten it. Yeah, so fold it in half and start. So we've got the head is a little bit higher. The ears are, do you see how there's the ears? There's two gaps and then her fringe. I may need to invest in a babysitter for a Friday night because Peanut has stopped napping at this point. Oh, hello. Sorry. So yes, we've got the ears. There's a gap and then her fringe. So we're aiming to have the horns starting. Where? Oh yeah, they fully know when we're filming. Peanut's like, this is the time for me to cause all of the trouble. <laughs> I'm going to have the horns going up a little bit until just near the edge. And then I'm going to fold it back on itself and felt it back down. Now you can see my horn is quite large and floppy. So I'm going to refine it a little bit so it's a little bit pointier. So when I when I edit this video down to the 10 minute short ex explanation video of how to do this, I, I do do voiceovers. Um, so you don't have to listen to the to me a listen to my nonsense and b listen to peanut causing all the trouble but in the long videos i think it's just it's life it happens now very important here with her horns and do not forget this all highland cows have two slightly different shaped horns so you can, if these horns are exactly the same, oh, then you're not doing a real Highland cow. So deliberately, you're going to have to make these horns slightly wonky. Okay. Everything is, all the shapes are in place, the colours are in place. I'm going to take the time just now to pull this off the backing so it's not, oop. So it doesn't get too stuck. You can see all the previous the ones I've done. Now, once, especially at this stage, when you pull it off the backing, it's going to slightly misshape. That's because the pre-felt is quite stretchy. And the more we felt this down, the stiffer it'll become and the less it'll lose its shape when you're manipulating it. So don't worry just now if your Highland Cow went all over the place. You can just gently pull her back into the way you want her and give her a wee flatten down. And that reminds me about the very important point I want to make next once I've had a sip of tea. Hold on one second. Oh, that's so cute. She is a big cat. How do you know when this is finished is the question. So depending, it depends is the answer, which is not a very useful answer. So in this hour that I've so we've still got about half an hour left in this hour we've got tonight, I'm going to get all the major things in, 
get everything where I want it to be. And then I'm going to go away for the night. I'm not going to do any more tonight. I'm going to come back in a day or two and give it a good 20 minutes stabbing all over and just add in little bits where I see those gaps. And then probably going to call it done then. But you don't have to. If you want to leave it slightly less felted and just more like a picture and say you're going to put it behind glass in a frame, that's totally fine. Do that. If it's going to be a high touch thing, like a book cover or if it's going to be in the shop, say, like I always felt them mine really well because they're going on display in the shop and they're touched every single day. So I will go for like a good while. In fact, I use my felting machine at the end and just stab it all over to make sure it's properly locked in. So it's entirely up to you how well felted you want it to be. Which is not a useful answer, but it's the answer I'm giving you. Um, and I'll show you how to put it in the frame nearer the end. But okay, so we've got a few more little... We've got to get her eye in and her nosies in. So I'm using the dark black here. Oh, also, give me a link to your podcast. I would like to listen to that, please. So her eye, we're going to start off with it just being one black dot. That's a little bit big. <laughs> one little black dot just peeking out from under her fringe. And we're going to give her a little highlight of the actual white. And when I say highlight, I mean absolutely tiny, tiny. So tiny. Even smaller than that. <laughs> Scrumple it right up. This is the technical term. And to pop that in. Little highlight there. There we go. Now she will look wonky just now. Don't panic. The more we add and do things, the more it'll all make sense. So we need a little bit of shadow underneath this hair here. I'm taking a dark black and just going to lay it under there. <laughs> Fold. Yes. Very good point. So, uh, fold. Don't know where it's come from, but is it like uh, in Scotland you'd have A sort of, I'm, try, I'm trying to do words and they're just not coming. <laughs> um, the beside like a stable, it's, I'm probably wrong about this. There would be a, a slightly smaller field that we would call a fold, but I suspect fold is also the group noun for Highland cows. Correct me if I'm wrong. And now her little nosies. I'm going to take again just a tiny bit of the black. You gave me a shout in the podcast. Oh, definitely send me the podcast. You need to tell me these things. And essentially her nose is going to be two black dots. I think is just the easiest way. If you want to, if you want to go detailed her, because please deviate from this. I am by no means... <laughs> I'm definitely not the authority. <laughs> um, they have got like, like. <laughs> did you see what? Sometimes when you stab in a tiny, tiny bit, it goes right the way through. So they have got these little bits that kind of go up and curl in, but sometimes that can be a bit distracting. So at the moment, I'm just doing.
Ah, yes. That makes sense. Yeah, folds, are, I, th I think, they are like the containing of the animals. You would call like a pig fold or a sheep fold. But I'm entirely, oh, I, I make no claims to being, to knowing what I'm talking about. <laughs> Do I want to put some brown up that side? Or do I want to just, just put a little bit of brown going up? I, I reserve the right to change this. Yeah, that's better. Okay, and now I'm going to put a little bit of dark brown underneath her nose to give a little bit of shadow. And to make her nose pop a little bit. And around the side as well. But we are, so don't worry, we're going to add layers to this. So it's going to blend in a little bit more. It'll just look a little bit, woo, the second, the first time you put it down. The joy of layering. So summer has come to Fort William. You can tell because it's raining sideways. But occasionally there's tiny, tiny bits of uh, sun poking through. And it is lovely. And it's also, I only, I walked out of the shop today to go get my lunch. And I didn't even put a jacket on. That's how sunny it is here. So now I'm going to start working again on her body and I'm going to layer up some really fine layers. So we're going to do the same technique. Take a tiny, can you even see how tiny that bit is? Take a tiny bit of orange. We're making sure to fold it in half and the fold, hee <laughs> the fold, the folded end is the top and the hairs just go down. So I'm going to start layering up some of them, put some more in her fringe as well. I want to get this girl nice and orange. There is rumours that, I mean, it's probably true, from what I think I've read, that the Highland cows are seen today as being orange is because it was Queen Victoria's. She liked them orange, so she encouraged her farmers to breed orange ones specifically but you do get them in every colour. Where's my chocolate? There we are. Oh, the orange is called Vixen. I haven't mentioned that yet. So Vixen chocolate. I've got Murit. This one I haven't used, so I'm just going to hide it and pretend nobody saw it. And Butterscotch is the other colour that we're using. So again, layer up the colours. You want to have lots of layers and lots of little ones poking through. And even little highlights on her ears, I think, are needed. So I'm going to take some of the Vixen. Need that even less of the Vixen. There we go. And just put a little bit of the vixen in her ears. Just to give it a little pop, make sure she's got her eye has gone a very strange shape. Let's even move it down a little bit. <laughs> Get that back up in the corner. There we go. That's a bit better. Although now she's like got a little alien eye poking out. The joy of needle felting is that we get this messy stage. Wait, there's a film called The Last Unicorn. I need to watch this. Uh, yeah, we get, we go through a messy stage where you think it looks terrible and it's totally fine to think that. But trust me, it probably doesn't. And if... 
Yeah, she got personality. She watching us. Um, yeah, this is why. This is the other reason why I always say to go away and come back tomorrow because you'll come back with fresh eyes. Because just now you're staring at this for so long that it doesn't really make sense in your head anymore. Peanut is having great fun now. And I like to, normally I'll send a picture to my wonderful parents while I'm working on something and ask their advice and that's see, see what they say, what I've missed or what I can't see. I'm taking some of the Murit and I'm going to put some shadows in the horns. So for her horns, I'm going to put a little bit of the Murit just closest to her face and going up under, that's not Murit, that's chocolate, Murit, up under and up to the top as well because the top of their horns tends to be a little darker as well. There we go, we've got a little bit of life in those horns there. Now again, this is all still quite fluffy, so don't worry about it. Ooh, I will definitely have a go at that book. Again, I'm going to do the same on the other side. Bring that horn up and underneath. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna. What time are we at? I'm gonna spend five minutes and just felt stab, stab, stab all over her and see what bits are missing and what bit needs needs some work. I'm just gonna stab, 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 stab all over. I've got my three needles in my hand. This is the bit where you really get your uh, anger out. And also you'll see it starts to, the, when, as you're stabbing over it, it, it kind of changes and morphs and suddenly starts to make sense, if that makes sense. And you'll notice any bits like here, the sky's not gone quite down to her back and I've got missing a bit of brown there. So I'm going to come back to them. <laughs> I'm just, gigg just quietly giggling to myself. <laughs> oh, and that's something I should probably mention. I never really mentioned this. So I do, I do what I do, what I tell people to do. And I, after the hour is up, I go away and then come back to it in a day or two and play about with it for another, like I say, half an hour ish to an hour. And any changes that I make to the design or any sort of, sometimes I'm like, oh, I really just needed that tiny bit there. I change it but if you want to see if you want to see those changes on the front cover of the kit the box that you this should all be in is a picture of the very final design so anything any of this like the small changes that I might have made you'll have a look on the cover and they'll be there there's not never anything major but sometimes We've swapped something somewhere. We. Me. Okay, I'm going to pull that green in. Have I forgotten any obvious questions about felting? Oh, so for the green coming up to the edge, I'm doing the same technique 
as I'm doing for her hair and folding it over so that I get a nice edge and then felting that edge into there and when you felt it in it's gonna you won't see the sort of curves I also need I want to pull some of the blue down in fact this bit doesn't really matter too much blue down or green up blue down So the blue is kind of going over the green as if it's like misty hills in the background. Or it's raining and the sky is literally fading. <laughs> it's coming down onto us, which is more likely. But we've just got that lovely impression that the background is really blurry. You probably won't even see any of this because it's not going to be in the frame. But you'll know it's there. Oh, my lights just turned out. That was exciting. Hold on one second. And flip them back on. It's saying you've been on for long enough. <laughs> Is that better? There we are. We're back. Oh, no, that's only one. There we go. That's better. Focus, focus. I know, the, in the same way that Peanut knows when I'm felting, the lights know when I'm felting as well. Or it's possible, I mean, it's entirely possible that there's a timer on them that I don't know about. I'm going to do two little darker bits inside her ears. Not as dark as her eyes, but just where the ears meet. Where the ears meet the hair and underneath there just popping in some darker bits that's better yeah there's probably a timer on the lights that i haven't figured out it's probably incredibly obvious there we go oh that's better now i can see that her ears are pulled into the background perfect okay right let's have a quick go we've still got some time left but I want to get this in the frame just to see how it's looking so we can come back and make any changes that we need to make so how to work the frames so the frames are just bamboo embroidery hoops so all you're doing is unscrewing it'll be nice and it'll be all tight so unscrew until the end of the pin is just in line with the bolt. Move the mat away, trust me. Do this on a hard surface. So put your center, the one without the bolt, down. And then feel for where it is. So I can feel that the horns are kind of even distance and then that having it nice and open we'll press it down now she's looking a little bit low do i want her a little bit higher which way's higher higher is that way and i still want her horns to be in that's too high this is a fun bit where you can play about with where you want her to be She's also getting a little bit squinty there. So I'm going to pop her in there, right. And so just press the hoop over the inner circle and then gently ease it on. And if you want to see what it's going to look like when it's finished, you can just squish all, <laughs> squish all those bits on the inside and have a quick look and stand back, look at her from a few different angles and see what you need to change. So there will be a few things pop out as this happens. So I can see that when I put it in the frame, it's pulled away and you can see some of the backing there so I need to add in even more blue there 
Ooh, my lo the ghosts, the ghosts. <laughs> Where are we? This might be it again for the whole night. It just keeps popping off every five minutes. Um, what was I saying? <laughs> I've forgotten. Oh yeah. So you'll see that it's moved slightly and then I can see there's a weird line there that I need to fill in. I need to put some more in the sky. So I'm going to go and do that. But if yours is completely finished, you've done tonight's stuff, felting, you've got, you've gone back a couple of days later, done your homework, felt it all over and you're perfectly happy with it. When you put it in the frame, get it exactly where you want it to be. And to fix it in, you just tighten up this until it is as tight as it can go again. So you see that little peg will start to come out of there. So make it all nice and tight. And once it's super tight and it doesn't move, all you're going to do is take a pair of scissors and chop along the inside line there. So you'll see, do I have one finished next to me? No, I don't. Um, <laughs> Look at the felting in the back. Uh, so just chop this bit off and it will be nice and close to the end and you will have a finished cow. But thank you, Robin. Oh, the lights do keep going. What? Is, there's, there's a definitely... It's not a ghost. It's just a light. I'm sure it's fine. I'm going to keep felting in the dark. Well, it's not really dark. You can still see. It's just not quite as bright <laughs> as it was. So I'm going to do those little bits. Probably the fairies. Or maybe I haven't paid the brownie recently. So in Scotland we have the brownies. I don't know if they exist in other folk, 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 folk lore. Oh, that's a hard word to say. So brownies, yeah. Brownies can be good helpers or they can be mischievous. It's, I think, this is, I think this is correct. If you've got to leave a plate of milk out for them and they'll help you. And you've always got to make sure you pay your brownies when they help you, otherwise they get very upset and cause trouble. But the other funny thing is that when I was young, and it's still a thing now, and I know in America and places like that, you have the scouts and the girl guides. I don't know what your... So the youngest you'd start, you'd be a brownie. Maybe, maybe that was, so we went to brownies and then we went to guides. Um, and maybe that's saying something about younger children is that you uh, have to pay them in milk and if you don't pay them, you cause, we cause trouble. I don't know, mum, you can. Oh. Oh, oh, wait, how do you pronounce this? Memegoosing? Memegoosing? Is that right? Memegoosing? Yeah, we've got, we've got brownies, fairies. I want to say pixies, but I want, I worry that that's just a Terry Pratchett thing that I, because <laughs> I read too much Terry Pratchett and their characters in that. And maybe I just, my folklore, Meme Go See Sing. Oh, red caps, mushrooms. Yes, mushroom fairies. Now I'm just rambling nonsense. <laughs> okay, I'm really happy with how she is coming along. Oh, I need to do this little bit of her face there. Give her a little bit of, a little bit of cheekbone there. I think we're nearly, nearly done for tonight. I think the fairies are telling me I'm nearly done for tonight as well. 
Oh, yes, please. I want to do a little bit of shadow just underneath her fringe just to make that pop out as well. There we go, that's a bit better. Excellent. We have Toffee, the Highland Cow. I'm pretty happy with how she is looking. Her eye is a little bit... Something's not quite right about it, but I will figure that out right now. Is, it too, is the white spot too high up? Ah, there we go. That's better. There was too much of a white spot, so I've faded the white spot in a little bit more. So it's just a touch there. Perfect. I'm going to pop it in the frame just so that you can see. But I think, unless I've missed anything... Nope, I think we've got everything. I'm going to pop her in the frame. Yeah, now she's looking right at you. And then oh, a little bit more that way. So when you're framing her up for the last time, take your time about getting her in the right spot where you're really happy with her. But for just now, we have, let's get this out of the way. Put some artistically draped fiber there. We have Toffee the Highland Cow. So, uh, thank you so much for joining me tonight. It has been a joy as always. I always love seeing your finished pictures. So, we have a Facebook group. If you could pop your finished cows or anything else that you've felted in the Facebook group, the link is below. That we love seeing them. Uh, yeah, like, subscribe, comment. I appreciate all of the engagement uh, thank you for letting me do what i do have a lovely night my squishies thank you